In ancient India, there was a kingdom in the central region. The queen of that kingdom was very devoted to Gautam Buddha. The king of that kingdom, Maharaja Devraj, had two queens named Suruchi and after reading something, she was the first wife of King Devraj and her nature was like this. Of a saintly woman, she considered Lord Buddha as her idol and tried to follow his teachings. If you believe in Mahatmas, listen carefully to these divine teachings, watch this video till the end, otherwise after you will regret it, invest here instead of wasting your precious time. You will learn something new on this useless short video, his son also used to play with him, but King David's attention was on his second wife, who was very beautiful. The king lost himself in the charm of her beauty and went to the palace. All comforts and facilities were provided to them. The whole palace was filled with excitement as he and his son ascended the throne because he was the queen's son but destiny had other plans. Deborah's first wife Suruchi had a noble soul. She used to talk about justice, religion and Buddhist teachings. And it was growing up in such company that their son was Veer who had grown up with a serious nature since childhood, was satisfied with whatever he got but ultimately his heart was like that of a child, the wheel of time turned. And one day in the court when the name of the future prince was going to be announced in the kingdom, on that day everyone was restless because Veer was going to be declared the future prince, the Maharaja was sitting on the throne with his beloved wife, I am ready, the Maharaja showed affection. So much for his son and Veer was sitting in the court with his mother, all the priests informed Veer's mother that today is the coronation ceremony of Veer's kingdom, prepare him and bring him. So Ruchi Veera's mother also decorated your beloved prince with great love. He applied Tilak on his forehead and folded his hands in front of God. The puja was about to begin, conch shells started blowing in the palace. The priest also started looking towards his father's throne and placed his small palm at his father's feet to give blessings. Kept it. The father raised his hand but pushed the queen away. Some were ready. The tears of the king's beloved started falling down from the throne. With harsh words and a harsh voice the queen said that you cannot sit on this phone, only for the dear queen. The son should sit on this throne, you are the son of a queen-like maid, my son Sumant will sit on the throne and whoever sits on that throne, the people will honor and respect him, go to your mother and serve Buddha, when as long as I am here you can never get respect and honor, the queen further said. She further said that first change your fate, for this you will have to be born from my womb. Hearing all this, the entire royal court became silent, everyone was surprised that why is Maharaja Devraj not saying anything, but the charm of beauty had fascinated the Maharaja's eyes. He wanted to rebel against the queen. If he rebelled against the queen, his luxurious nights would be ruined. His stepmother's words were more unpleasant than those of his father. He decided to remain silent in front of his father. After some time, he left the palace now, it was time for the evening a temple-like room was at some distance and inside there was a statue of Mahatma Buddha. The mothers would go there following the path shown by the Buddha while pointing towards the room. He asked what his mother was, in reply she said that it was the Mahatma. He will make you his disciple, go to his refuge son, in the refuge of Buddha I go, this line changed the atmosphere of the palace with emotions, which for years accepting the ongoing discrimination, tears could not be seen in his eyes, he said, son, there is a throne for you next to this throne but it is not so easy to reach, 
to reach that throne you have to follow the teachings of Mahatma Buddha. Although Beer could not understand which throne was greater than the royal throne, his stepmother's taunts still echoed in his ears. Saying that he is unlucky, but Veer's mother without wasting time brought him in front of the Buddha statue and said that now only Mahatma Buddha will bless you, so follow his teachings and follow the path shown by him. Come on, you will know where true happiness lies. A question was asked whether the Buddha was superior to the parents in terms of status, the queen was surprised to hear her son's innocent words. She lifted the bear in her lap and said to follow the Buddha's words with all your heart. As the bear fell down from his lap, he replied that from today the Buddha became my god. Only a few months had passed that the bear decided to leave the royal palace and meditate on the Buddha. The boy, who till yesterday had been living in his mother's lap he used to hide behind, Today he left the palace and went towards the forest. Everyone behind was surprised, his mother was also worried, but he had handed over everything to her. He said goodbye to the palace and left with his parents and Veer after a journey of about 100 kilometers to receive homosexual enlightenment from the Buddha. Departed, Maharaja Devaraj realized his mistake, but he still could not. After some time, do anything, Beer medical monks narrated the story of Mahatma Buddha and said that to know Buddha, one has to know oneself. But still Beer did not stop meeting Buddha. Then the Buddhist monk said, you also take rest, I will tell you tomorrow about Buddha. The whole night passed and Beer kept chanting Buddham Sharnam Samar, I went to take refuge in Buddha. When morning came Beer asked the Buddhist monks again, and they replied that one of my rings has been lost, this is the reason for my life. Find it, and then I will introduce you to Buddha Beer. He also started searching for that ring, from morning till night but he did not find the ring. Then the Buddhist monk sent Beer inside the hut to bring the ring, on reaching there, he saw that the ring was kept safely inside. Beer was very sad to see this scene and said to the Buddhist monk that when you had kept the ring inside the hut, then why did you search for me outside? In reply, the Buddhist monk said, just play Buddha lives within you. Why are you searching outside? Free yourself from attachment, ego, greed. Free yourself from the indulgence of others and criticism of every evil. Habit then you will find the Buddha within you. This is the lesson that Mahatma Buddha learned and how Siddhartha became Mahatma Buddha. After knowing the whole story Bear realized that now he has to follow the path shown by Buddha and immerse himself in deep meditation. He had to know this. Gradually as time passed Bear attained self-realization. He had reached the pinnacle of meditation. He erased the desire to be thrown from his life. Now he sat on the throne of higher thoughts. With time, Tyagi Bear's fame was also increasing. The news also reached the central kingdom that there was a great Buddhist monk meditating in a mountain cave. An invitation was also sent from the royal palace. The second son of King Velocita was ruined by luxury. The beauty of prosperity had also disappeared. On the other hand, Beer's wealth and popularity had spread far and wide. There was a day when Beer was not considered worthy of sitting on the throne. One day Beer reached the royal palace in the form of a Buddhist monk. In his eyes tears came. Along with the people, the respect and prosperity of the king was also clearly heard in the ears of Beer's mother. Beer's clothes were kept there of a Buddhist monk. It is said that Beer sat in his lap. He knowledge was gained. Now this is how true it is. 
I don't know but from this story we can learn that it is better to search within ourselves instead of searching for God, Paramatma and Buddha outside, we should do good deeds and help others. One should serve, there is nothing in life from luxury, stay away from greed and ego, try to adopt teaching work for the welfare of humanity and implement education.